Hello and welcome to this video and today I'm going to talk about a feature that was released in the Race Studio 3 analysis software that allows you to be able to chase your own reference lap. Now it's important at this point to be able to really talk about what we mean by reference lap and that is the actual lap that your device uses to be able to determine if the lap that you are on within the session that you're in is faster or slower than either a previous lap time or a predictive lap time and that's the actual reference. And so if you think about it, if you are faster in a corner, better in a break zone, better on the accelerator, oftentimes you see a predictive time that says you're either faster or slower uh, than your uh, previous best. Now, what's interesting is, is that in some devices, you only have one option, and that is you have the ability to follow what AIM determines is the predictive lap time using the sectors that it has calculated as it's learned the track. However, one of the features that many of the newer software and newer hardware should do is, is what I really mean. And I'm going to put on screen now a list of the devices that are able to be able to use this functionality is that you can actually upload your own lap time and be able to chase that. Now, many people might be wondering, well, why do I want to be able to do that? Well, if you're somebody like me who has done a really good lap time in the past at a track and then sometimes struggles to be able to uh, replicate it or to find where that time is, one of the things that I often like to be able to do, and I do this a lot in simulators, is that I always go back to my optimal best lap time and then use that to be able to chase. Or I go back to my best lap time and I say, okay, well, I've done it once. Let's see if I can do it again. So one of the things I always find to be really useful, and I've actually, to be honest, delayed this video. This feature came out late last year, but I've delayed releasing this video for the simple reason that I think that this is going to be really useful as we all start getting back to the track. We start to test for the beginning of this race season and we start looking at how do we regain that confidence? How do we regain that lap time that we previously were able to do, but at the same time, we may not necessarily be able to find as easily the first time we get back at the track. Now, to be able to do this, it's important that we set ourselves up really well to be able to do this. So uh, to do that, we need to make sure that our device and our software are both ready to go. So if we switch over to Race Studio 3, I'm here right now. And if you click up here, I've got two devices that are connected. I have an AIM Solo, which I have updated the firmware of recently. And I actually have my uh, MXP Strada, which is connected, which I use for iRacing. Now, one of the things that you may remember is that if you want to update your firmware, there's usually a little prompter that says your firmware needs to be updated. To do this, you need to make sure you have the latest software and firmware downloaded. So all you need to do is click up here on this icon, and if anything's new, it will be bold in this list. You then download it, and the system then recognizes that the firmware that's on your device uh, isn't necessarily the most current, and you can update it. To do that, all you need to do is click here on Update Device, I'm going to click here on the iRacing one, and it will tell me that I have an update to 2.40.40. So let's go ahead and get it done. Right, now that process is done. It is updated and it's ready to go. And you can see that that icon is no longer appearing there and that both the devices I have connected are capable of being able to use this new reference lap feature. We're probably going to use my solo for most of this demonstration, but I really wanted to show you just how simple it was to make sure that your firmware and everything is upgraded and ready to go. To be able to get to a reference lap, the first thing is, is we need to actually pick a lap that we want to chase. And to do that, we need to go to Race Studio 3 Analysis, which I've got loaded here. And we're going to go to a session where I want to pick a lap time. So, for example, if I wanted to be able to say, OK, I'm going to upload this to uh, an AIM Solo 2 and I'm going to be driving... Uh, let's say, for example, um, I'm going to be driving uh, at uh, Silverstone. One of the things I want to be able to do is find one of the lap times I did well last time. So here in qualifying, I've got a pretty decent lap time. So I just need to open that up and it's going to open up the usual view. Now I'm going to change this because I know what kind of car it was. Don't worry if I'm clicking through profiles. There are lots of tutorials in the tutorial series that show you how to set this up and know what I'm doing here. But this happens to be uh, a Van Diemen RF07 that I was driving. So I'm going to click there. It's going to load the right profile, so I'm going to get all the information that I want to be able to see. And I'm going to start clicking on a few things which are important. Now, the most important thing to set your reference lap is to go into laps. Then you're going to have a series of laps that are available here to choose from. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to right click and I'm going to click on this button that says generate a predictive reference lap from this lap. So what I'm doing is I'm telling the system what lap I want to be able to use 
to follow or chase next time I'm at Silverstone. So if I click on there, this box will appear and this is going to prompt me to be able to name it something. So if I say, for example, this one, I want to call Sylv uh, Best, like that. You only get eight characters, so do your best in terms of what you're going to call it. And here now we can say Best Lap in RF 07 at Silverstone National. Then all I need to do is click on OK. And it says, please go to the device page to transmit this reference lap to a compatible device. And this is where you needed to make sure your firmware was updated because this is how you need to upload it to the device. If I then click on OK, uh, it's going to disappear and I can carry on with my analysis as normal. However, there are a few things that have slightly changed with the latest version. And that is this particular button here. If you ever want to know what reference laps you have on your device to be able to manage, if you click here, you can see that I have that one that I just created. It's the only one that I have on there, but you can have as many as you like that are on here to be able to use. What you can also do is you can take them down from a device and put them on a different machine or put them back on the machine where you started with just in case you lose it. So it's nice to be able to have, but I have one on here. It's at Silverstone National. It was on the 24th of April and it's a 103.1 and I've named it Silv Best, which is that. So that's available. Don't need to do anything more now in the uh, Race Studio 3 analysis. But we do, however, need to go back to Race Studio 3 because we need to get it into the device. And to do that, we need to remember that this is the icon. Now, usually we use this to download data, to bring data from the device back. But if we click here, I'm going to exit from here. If we click here, one of the things we're going to do is we're going to click on this particular icon. This is going to load up my AIM Solo 2, which I have just down here uh, available to use. And you'll see that something has been added into the menu bar. These are all pretty normal. You've got your download capabilities where we all go and download our files. Sometimes we update our Wi-Fi properties, settings, those sort of things in the tracks. But this has now appeared, predictive reference lap. And this is where we can go in and specify if we want to use a user-defined predictive reference lap. All I need to do here is click on here and you'll notice that the files on device is empty. So all I need to do now is click here and I can move the device and I can click it from here. Click to export the selected file. So I can either do that or I can just move it using these buttons here. So I'm just going to click there. Notice how this little icon moved and it uh, it actually illuminated. It's a small file, so it doesn't take very long. But uh, if you want to rewind, you can see that appeared uh, in green. That says the file is now available. And so now on my uh, Solo 2, I now have this as a file to be able to chase. But one of the things I really want to do is to make sure that I can specify on the day which particular device I want to do. Now, one of the things I could do is I could pick up the device and I can change it in the settings. But I'm not going to do that for the purposes of today's demonstration, because while you're doing this, there is an easier way to do it. All you need to do is to click on uh, this icon here. And it will ask you what you want to be able to use on this device as a reference lap. So you can go down and you can say, I want to be able to use the best lap of the test, the best lap of today, the previous best lap, or the user reference lap. And so let's just go back here, get that back up again. Uh, always happens when you do a quick demo, something changes slightly. So let's go back in there uh, and we're going to click here uh, and it's going to give us the option here of being able to say, which one do we want? So we can do best lap of the test of today, previous lap or user reference lap. So previous lap, well, am I doing better or worse than the lap I just ran? Best of the today, not many people actually use this feature, but as the day progresses, people oftentimes just want to refer back to the lap of the day. This best lap of the test is one that nearly all of us use, and it's universally applicable on all devices, not necessarily just the list of devices I showed earlier that actually have this functionality. Um, this is where it breaks the lap time down into segments and then just tells you within the test how well you're doing and what your predictive lap time is. So here it's user reference lap, but you can change that as much as you want to. That's now set up on the device to be ready to use. If in a pinch you're not connected to Race Studio 3, you can actually change it on the device itself in the menu settings, but it's as simple as that. Now, one of the things you may have noticed as you're going through, there was one other thing that was in there as well. You can actually specify on here um, the uh, channel recording and you can switch this on or off. So you can actually record your predictive lap time versus your reference lap time um, or your lap time versus your reference lap time as a channel so you can look at it in terms of analysis later on to be able to say how was I doing in comparison as I looked at my best lap versus this as a channel. It's a nice way of being able to see 
how well you're doing in different views as we look at analysis. And we'll probably have a look at that in a later analysis video as we go forward. So beyond that, it really gives you the opportunity to be able to do this. And as I said, I delayed launching this video because I actually haven't had a chance to use this in the car yet because I actually haven't been in a race car since this feature was launched. So as we all now get to start preparing for race season and we want to put it in the device and we want to put it in our car, it's going to be a nice way of being able to say, hey, look, I did that lap time the last time I was here. I'm nowhere here right now. So on track, I have a visual cue to be able to say, oh, that's what I'm doing differently here. I'm losing half a second going through this particular corner. So in this case at Silverstone, it could be I'm losing half a second going through cops and I can start practicing when I'm on track, trying different techniques to get close to where I was previously and potentially to be able to find an even better lap time. So with that, I'm going to say thanks so much for watching this video. I hope this feature is something that's really useful for you to be able to use at the track. If you have used it and you really like it, please let me know. Now I will finish this video by saying there is without doubt going to be a series of comments for the feature that isn't available in here yet, which I've asked for, which everyone who's looked at this has asked for, and we have asked the AIM folks for as well. And that is, can I chase my theoretical best lap time? If that becomes a reality, I will update this video or create a new video as to how to be able to set that up. But for the time being, we're just going to focus on this one reference lap that's set up. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe if you did. Uh, potentially give it a like. That just helps these videos become more prominent uh, in YouTube. And with that, I'll say thanks so much for watching.